Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a mobile collapsing nested menu with Divi's theme builder. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so first things first, you need to log into your WordPress admin dashboard. And then once you've done that, you need to come all the way up here to appearance and then click on menus. So over here, you need to add all your menu items. So as you can see, I've added quite a lot of uh, menu items here, but the most important thing is once you've created your menu, you wanna make sure that you give it a name here and then you save. And then on the bottom here, you need to make sure that it's set to primary menu. All right, so let's add our sub menus. So over here, I want my sub menu to go under portfolio. So I'm just gonna drag this like that to the side. And then my other sub menus need to come under services. So I'm gonna drag this below services that, and if you are wondering how I created this, these are just created quickly by coming over here to custom links and adding a blank URL here. And over here on the services, I'm just gonna call this services three, add to menu, drag it into position. So in your case, you could have different items here on your menu. I'm just gonna drag all this way down here to contact. So as you can see, this is really, really flexible. So you can play around with this as much as you want. Now that I'm happy with this, I'm gonna click on save menu. So once you're done here, the next stage is to come over here to screen options. And what you wanna do here is to activate CSS classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and check it here, I'm gonna close that. So now we need to give services a CSS class. So you can see here, CSS classes is optional. So I'm gonna add it here. It's called first level. Now, if you wanna follow along step by step, I'll give you a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so I have first level there and I also need to add another one on portfolio. So I'm just gonna close this, come over here to portfolio, do the same thing, add my CSS class and then save menu. Now it's time to go to the theme builder. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here hover over Divi, click on theme builder. So right now I have a header in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete because of course in your case, you won't have anything in here. So I'm gonna build everything from scratch. So to get started here, I just need to click on add global header, build global header. Now this is gonna take us to our Divi builder. So here in our Divi builder, all I have to do is to click on build from scratch. And then I'm just gonna close this for now, head over here to my section settings, and then you wanna click on uh, design spacing. And here you wanna add a padding of zero pixels, both to the top and the bottom. So to make sure that your header is going to be above every other content on your page, you need to head over to the Z index. So I'm gonna click here on advanced position and then all the way down here under Z index, I'm just gonna drag the slider all the way up and then save. Next, I'm gonna add a brand new row. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and the column structure I'm gonna go with is this one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Now, before I add any modules, I need to make some adjustments to my row settings. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon, click on design, sizing, make sure that uh, use custom gutter width is set to yes. And then I'm just gonna drag this all the way to one. Now this reduces the space between the columns. And the next thing I wanna do here, make sure equalized column heights is set to Yes, and then here on the width, set it to 100%, max width 100%. So this is gonna make sure that our row is edge to edge. Now I need to head over here to spacing because over here, I'm gonna add a padding of a zero, both to the top and the bottom. And to make sure all the modules appear next to each other on smaller screens, we are going to use a bit of the CSS code. So I'm gonna come over here to advanced, custom CSS, and then on the main element, I'm just gonna add this CSS code. Now, as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same CSS code, I will leave this in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right, so now let's head over here to content and go into column one. So the first thing I need to do here in column one is to add a bit of padding. So I'm gonna click here on design, spacing, and I wanna add a padding of 20 pixels, both to the top and the bottom. Next, you wanna come over here to border and I'm gonna break this chain and give a value of 100 here to the top and 100 on the bottom. Head over here to my box shadows. I'm gonna go with the first option and then I am going to add a box shadow horizontal position of 20 pixels. The blur strength, I'm gonna set this to 50 and my shadow color here is going to be, let's make it 0.15. Right, so that's all we need to do here. 
I'm going to save that. I'm going to come over here to column two, click on design. As we did before, I'm going to add a padding of 20 pixels, both to the top and the bottom. And then over here, we're just going to leave the left and right as it is. Click on save. Finally, we're going to go to our third column. And the first thing we're going to do here is to add a background. So I'm going to click here on background, and this is going to be a gradient. So I'm going to click on the second tab, click the plus button, and add my first color. I'm going to paste my first color in here, paste my second color. Now I need to arrange the gradient direction. So make sure it's set to linear, but the uh, degrees here, I'm going to set it to 116. Now, as we did with the the other columns, we're going to come over here to design, spacing, add 20 pixels, both to the top and the bottom as well. Next, we're going to add a border. So I'm going to activate border here, break the chain. And this time, my shape here is going to be on the left. So I'm going to add 100 pixels, both to the top left and bottom left. I'm going to add a box shadow. And this time, I'm going to go with this option here. Horizontal position is going to be minus 26 zero pixels for the vertical position and then i'm going to add my shadow color so i'm going to come over here on this eyedropper tool drag the slider all the way up because we want to have a solid color here without transparency and i'm going to, and I'm going to paste my color in there so pretty much we have our design in place here i'm going to go ahead and save save one more time and now i can add my logo by adding an image module so i'm going to add my image in here and then i'm going to search for my image so I'm going to use a logo that we already have here on my computer. So I'm going to go with this one here, upload an image. So here on design, I'm going to make sure image alignment is set to center. And as you can see, the sizing here is a bit too much. So on the width, let's set this to 120 pixels. So just to make sure that everything looks great on all devices, I'm going to click here on this little icon. And then on the tablet here, let's reduce the size to about 80. And that's going to be the same for the phone as well. Great. So I'm back over here on my desktop tab. Now we're going to add a menu to the middle column. So I'm going to save this. Click here on this plus button. Search for my menu module. Select it. So as you can see here, the background here is blending in. So we need to get rid of this background by coming over here to background and just clicking here on transparent. And now that gets rid of it. Next, we're going to come over here to design. So layout, I want to make sure this is centered. Now over here on the menu text, let's choose our font and we're going to go with monster ad. I'm going to select that. On the weight here, let's set it to medium. Menu color, we'll set it to black. And then for the size, we're going to set it to 13. And for the letter spacing, we're going to set this to one. Now let's customize the drop down menu. So over here, I'm just going to click here on drop down. So let's start here with a uh, drop down menu background color. So let's set this to white. And then the line color, we're going to set it to black. And we can preview it quickly just by mousing over here. So you can see this is how this would look. Next, we're going to come over here to icons. And here we're going to set our icons to black. So I'm just going to set the hamburger to black as well. And then we're going to save. Now over here, we're going to add some text. And the text is just going to say sign up. So let's start by adding our menu. I mean, our module, text module. So I'm going to select it. And the text I'm going to add in here is just going to say sign up. Now make sure that this sign up links to the sign up page by coming over here to link and adding your link. So in this case, I'm just going to add a blank link. Now let's head over here to design text. And here we're going to change our fonts to master ads, making sure that we are consistent. Over here, we're going to set this to semi bold. Text color is going to be white so that it stands out on that uh, dark background. And then for our line height here, I'm going to set this to 1 EM. Now text size is going to be 16. And the text alignment needs to be centered. Now let's head over here to spacing. Now, as you can see here, things don't look aligned. So I'm going to add a top margin of 10 pixels. So once you've completed the design of your header, it's time now to add some custom code that will transform the mobile menu into a collapsing nested menu. So to do this, let's start off by saving here. And we're just going to add a code module here. So I'm going to search for it first, select it. Now the code we're going to use is going to be in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So all you have to do is to copy that code and paste it in here. Now let's add our code in here. So this needs to be CSS. And then the ending tag should be all the way at the bottom here. So now you can see it's all styled correctly. 
Next, we're also going to add our Java, our jQuery code, and uh, the jQuery code needs the tags called script, and then I'm going to paste my jQuery code between the script codes. And again, as I mentioned, this is on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So now I'm going to paste my jQuery code in here. I'm going to save it. Now let's take a look and see if this is now working. So as you can see, this is working okay, and this works fine on mobile devices as well. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.